Hadith 5 Salah Helps in Adversities Josepha, God be pleased with him, says that whenever the Messenger of God, divine contact upon him and wholeness happened to face any difficulty, he would at once resort to the contact prayers. An Hadifa ta Kala kana Rasulallahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Iza hazabuhum run fazi'a illa salat Oh, I should have... It's salat, you know, I, I should have... Oh, as-salat. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, the two dots, I should have made it... A, pronounce it as a T. Um, but this is narrated, um, Akrajahu Ahmed, Abu Dawood, Ibn Jarir, and his Adar Manshur. Salah is a great Rahmah of Allah. To resort to Salah at the time of worry is to hasten towards his Rahmah, and when Allah's Rahmah comes to the rescue, there can remain no trace of any worry. There are many traditions concerning this practice of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Similarly was the practice of his Sahaba, who followed him in the minutest detail. Abu al-Darda uh, Anhu says, Whenever a strong wind blew, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would immediately rush to the masjid and would not leave until the wind had subsisted, had subsided. Similarly, at the time of solar or lunar eclipse, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would at once start offering salah. Suhaid radiallahu anhu was informed by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that all the previous anbiya of Allah, peace be upon them all, used to resort to Salah in all difficulties. And, and we find in the Bible and other such, the word for prayer isn't just, well, you know, isn't just, you know, you say or think something that you want to say or think. There's more to it than that. Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, was once on a journey. On his way, he got the news of the death of his son. He got down from his camel and offered two rakat of Salah. Praying in Tashahud for a long time, he recited, Inna Lalahi wa Inna Ilaiha Raja'un, and said, I have done what Allah has ordered us to do, and recited the Quran with the verse, Wasta'inu Besabre wa Salate wa Innam. <coughs> Was dainu be sambre was salate wana hala kabiratun elalakashain. Seek Allah's help with patience and with the ritual prayer. See Surah 2 40, uh, well, Surah 2 45. 8 45. Another similar story is narrated about him. He was on a journey when he received the news about the death of his brother, Gothum. He descended from his camel by the roadside and performed two braka'a as-salah and kept praying in tashahud for a long time. After finishing his salah, he rode his camel, reciting the following verse of the Holy Quran. Was dainu be sambre was salate wana la kabiratan la la kashain. Seek Allah's help with patience and arisings, and truly it is indeed hard except to the humble minded. Surah 2 45. There is yet another story about him. On hearing of the death of the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he fell down prostrate 
When someone asked him the reason, he said, Our dear Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has enjoined on us to prostrate this law whenever calamity befell us. What calamity can be greater than the death of Um al Mu'minin? When Ubadah, radiallahu anhu, was about to breathe his last, he came, he said to the people around him, I prohibit one and all from crying over me. When the soul departs, I ask everyone to perform wudu, observing all of its essentials, and to go out to the masjid and pray for my forgiveness, because our gracious Allah has enjoined on us to seek help with patience and salah. After that, lay me down in the pit of my grave. Nadr Rahmata Alay narrates, Once it became very dark during the day in Medina, I hurriedly went to Anas, Anhu, to ask him if he had ever experienced similar conditions during the lifetime of our Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said to me, Ma Abdullah, during those blessed days, whenever the wind blew strong, we would hurry to the masjid, lest it should be the approach of the Kiyama. Abdullah bin Salam, Ardilahu Anhu, narrates that whenever the members of Rasulullah's family were hard pressed in any way, Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would enjoin upon them to say Salah, and would recite the following verse of the Holy Quran. And enjoin the ritual prayers upon thy family, and be thyself constant therein. We shall not ask, uh, we shall, uh, we ask not of thee to provide sustenance, we provide it for thee, and the hereafter is for the righteous. Surah 28, 132. Wah. Wamralaka besalate was tabir ali ala ta. Let me start that over. Wamralaka besalate was tabir ali ala. Nasaluka rizku nahnu narzukuka wala kebatule taqwa. It is said in the hadith that when someone is faced with a need, whether relating to his life or to the akara, or whether it concerns a law or a human being, he should perform a perfect wudu, offer salah of two rakat, glorify Allah, and then ask blessing for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then pray as under. La, <clears throat> la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallahu halimu kabiru abd. La ilaha, sorry. La ilaha illallahu halimu karimu subhanallahi rabbil arshil arhima alhamdulillahi rabbil alamina as'aluka maujibate rahmatika wa ata imma mangfiratika wal ganimatu min kume berin wa salam mata min kume itme la tadali lanban illa lafar Tahu wala hamman ella faraj tahu wala had jat taun iyalaka dan ella arbe taha ya arhamma rahimin. There is no God save Allah, the 
clement, manifold, glorified be Allah, the Lord of the tremendous throne. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. I ask thee to all that leadeth to thy mercy, and deserve thy forgiveness. I ask thee abundance in all that is good, and refuge from all that is evil. Leave me no sin. Leave me no sin, but thou pardonest it. And no distress, but thou removest it. And no need, but thou fulfillest it. O oh, merciful, most merciful of those that show mercy. I'm not seeing the word. Qaitaha ya rahma rahe me. I'm seeing. Okay. Um, the transliteration seems to be off. Wahab ibn Munabba writes Have your needs fulfilled by Allah? through Salah. In the good old days, if a calamity befell the people, they would hurry towards Salah. It is said that in Kufa, there was a porter who was well known for his honesty. People trusted him with their valuables and their money, which carried, which carried from one place to another. Once he was on his usual trip when a person met him in the way and asked him about his destination. When the porter gave him the required information, he said, I am also bound for the same destination. If I could walk, I would have accompanied you on foot. Will you kindly give me a lift on your mule for one dinar? The porter agreed and allowed him to share the mule with him. They came to a crossing on the way. The person said, Now which road will you take? The main road, of course, replied the porter. The person said, No, brother, we should go by the other road, which is a shortcut, and there is plenty of grass and route to feed the animal. The porter said, I have never been on this path. The person remarked, But I have traveled by this route quite often. The porter believed him and put the animal on that path. After some distance, the path ended in a terrifying forest where a large number of dead bodies were lying about. All of a sudden, the person jumped down from the mule and took out his knife with intent of killing the porter. Hold your hand, shouted the porter. Take the animal and its load, but do not kill me. The person refused to listen to his request and swore that he would first kill the porter and then take possession of the animal and the goods. You know, maybe the thief, the theft was just an excuse to kill people. Seeing that his appeal fell on deaf ears and that his cruel heart would not mount, the porter said to him, All right, you must kill me. Then permit me to say only two were caught. Salah. The person agreed and remarked, You can please yourself. All the dead you see over here made the same request. But their salah was of no avail to them. The porter started the salah, but could not recollect any surah to connect with Fataha, in spite of his best efforts. Meanwhile, the person grew impatient and pressed him hard to hurry up with his salah. All of a sudden, the following verse came to his mind. Amman yujibu mudaraza tahu wa yakshifu suwa. Is it not he who answereth the wronged one when he crieth unto him and removeth the evil? Is enamel twenty seven sixty two? It's A at 62, but Anamal's 27, right? Where am I thinking? Anam. Um, the porter was reciting this verse, and tears came up in his eyes, while a horseman suddenly appeared on the scene. He was wearing a shining helmet and a spear in his hand. He pierced the body of the pitiless rogue with his spear and killed him. Then and there, a flame of fire rose from the spot where the dead body fell. The porter fell down prostrate and thanked the law. After finishing his salah, he ran towards the horseman and requested him to disclose his identity. He replied, I am the slave to the Aya Aman Yujibu Mudtara. Him who answereth the wrong one, Sir Alamo. A at 62, you are now safe and can go wherever you like. Saying this, the horseman rode away and disappeared. Indeed, Salah is a great asset.
Besides pleasing Allah, it often saves from the calamities of this life and provides us with the peace of mind. Ibn Sirin writes, If I be allowed to choose between Jannah and Salah of Turukats, I would prefer Salah. The reason is quite clear. Jannah is for my own pleasure, while Salah is for the pleasure of my dear Allah. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, Nefable is the loot of a Muslim who is with the least burden, whose main fortune is Salah, who remains content with some humble provisions throughout his life, who worships his Allah in a dutiful manner, who lives unknown, and who dies an early death, leaving very little legacy and few to mourn him.